Hey, what's going on everyone? You're watching the Boss Coin YouTube channel. I'm Bosk, and today we're gonna to be reviewing Nice Hash. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. We're gonna to be touching on all the controversial topics, such as the hack. We're gonna talk about 51% attacks. We're gonna go over all, also all the pros of Nice Hash and how it's a unique place to mine numerous coins with CPUs, GPUs, ASIC miners, and you can be, be uh, paid out in Bitcoin, which Surprisingly here in 2020 is still kind of a unique premise and they still don't have that many competitors um, In that regard right now. I have a CPU miner I have a GPU miner and I have an ASIC miner all synced up to their platform I'm also going to go over the hash power buying on their marketplace and how nice hash is not cloud mining It's actually basically a broker of hash rate and I don't know if you guys know this, but they also have a cryptocurrency exchange. If you do want to use NiceHash, please use our uh, referral link in the video description below. Honestly, all that little stuff adds up and helps. And also lets us know uh, how many of you guys are even interested uh, in using this platform to either buy hash rate, sell hash rate, or use their crypto exchange. You also may be thinking, wow, Voss, that's a cool shirt, or that's a weird shirt, or that's a nerdy shirt. What is it? If you're not familiar with Enter the Gungeon, it's a real fun game. I think it's on like every platform. I got it on the Switch. I was good to Amo Namicon, which only came with the PS4 version, I think. But anyway, this stuff's super cool, and it's a fun game if you like uh, if you like those kind of games. And come on, you gotta respect the pixel graphics in this one. So let's go ahead and dive into this crazy video. Thanks to Nice Hash for sponsoring the video, making this stuff possible. Because honestly, times aren't that great right now, and without sponsors like that, Bosscoin would not be around. There's three major components of NiceHash. There's the cryptocurrency mining, buying hash power, and cryptocurrency exchange that you can no longer see. One of the key things that I wanna stress in the platform review of NiceHash is that it's not cloud mining. We've talked a lot about cloud mining and really the why it's bad, right? And NiceHash is not cloud mining, it's a hash power marketplace. And is that just a clever way to say cloud mining? No. Okay, so very simple graph here, but miners provide hash power. Nice, NiceHash acts as a middleman, a broker here. They send the uh, rented hash power to their pool, and then buyers create buy orders, which I'll go over more here in a second. So you can basically buy hash on any coins. And then that, you know, nice hash again brokers this, and then miners get paid out. And what's very interesting, Bitcoin. If you're a follower of the Voscoin YouTube channel, you know that we love mining a lot. Okay, so we're gonna talk a lot about that in this uh, video. But I wanna take a uh, moment here to have a key focus on just the buying aspect, which is very interesting. And the other side of selling your hash power is buying hash power. and. To, so you can know a little bit more about that and, and why and where it comes into play. Any miner that you're able to connect to nice hash and sell hash power with, you'll be able to buy that hash power because again, it works as a marketplace here. So say there's a coin on Lyra 2, Rev 2, mining algorithm that you want to mine, or say Dagger Hashimoto, which is Ethereum's mining algorithm, or Equihash, which is attributed to Zcash. But you know, Ethereum and Zcash may not be the best example here because those are pretty common coins. You can buy them a lot of places. So let's take a coin like Beam. And this is their V2 algorithm. It's their new and updated mining algorithm. So this is directly associated with the Beam coin and Beam privacy. And this is a cryptocurrency that's not on a ton of exchanges currently. It's also not a very accessible to US citizens, okay? There are places where US citizens can buy this coin to be fully clear, but again, it's not something that's on like Coinbase and Gemini Exchange, things that are easy to access for US citizens. So maybe this is an opportunity where you have Bitcoin, which anyone can pretty much buy anywhere these days, for the most part. Again, it still could be easier, but whatever, that's an aside. So you've got Bitcoin and you want some Beam, but you can't go on an exchange and buy it and you don't have a cryptocurrency mining rig to just directly mine that coin. Enter NiceHash. You can rent this hash power. You literally basically rent a GPU mining rig that's connected to NiceHash and then you can direct that to mine Beam for you in exchange for a Bitcoin price, which is you know correlated down here. You can create a new order on the European market, or you can create a US order right here, which 
pretty interesting stuff it's also very cool that you can create an order on different markets regardless of your location so for example the price um, for a uh, soul which is like the measured hash rate on beam is higher on in the european market than it is in the u.s market so i know where i would be buying my beam hash rate again guys the big takeaway here is that this really opens up the door for you to get access to these hard to acquire coins in the earlier stages which most people would say the earlier you get into a coin, normally speaking, historically, better. Wouldn't you have rather have acquired Bitcoin way, you know, 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15, as opposed to at the end of 2017? Yeah, me too. And obviously as a seller, you get paid out in Bitcoin instead of Beam if you don't like Beam and you just want to sell your hash rate. This is how their platform uniquely applies to different users. They have an exchange now, which is pretty interesting. I'm in the US, so I don't get access to it yet. It may be accessible to you, and they may add US support in the future. Right now I have two rigs synced up to NiceHash, and I'm selling my hash power. So with these, I have one rig that has a CPU and a GPU on it, contributing CPU and GPU mining hash, and then I have an ASIC mining rig. So if you click over here on mining, it'll take you to your rig stats page, and it'll give you a breakdown of your weekly income as measured in USD as well as a Bitcoin value. Really, it's it's measured in Bitcoin and it's giving you a translation to the current Bitcoin value of that. It'll project your monthly revenue as well as your annual or yearly revenue. You can see that my GPU is mining Zhash and my CPU is mining RandomX Monero and I have an Equihash ASIC miner connected. The way this works is that NiceHash pays out an interval, so every four hours I'll, accumu I'll accumulate a balance and then it'll be paid to my NiceHash wallet. The way their platform works, if you've used it before, it's a completely internal process now. So uh, you know, you mine with your NiceHash wallet and then you get paid out into your NiceHash wallet and then when you want to, you can withdraw your balance to whatever Bitcoin address that you link with your account and uh, that's simply that. And don't think I'm gonna glaze over the bad thing that happened with NiceHash. I was around when this happened, and I know that some of you watching this video may have been affected, and obviously you're gonna be upset. Okay, so, you know, this is what happened. Long story short is NiceHash was hacked. They lost 4,736 Bitcoin, and at the time of just this article, before this article was even higher, $62 million, okay? Over the next year or you know 1.52 years, at this time NiceHash has repaid 82% of its funds as outlined in this official post from them and it's linked out if you wanna read more about it in the video description below. And I wanna elaborate on this because I know this is a serious issue, it's a touchy subject and uh, you know, again, it needs to be part of this review just as a long time user ourselves and many of you in the mining community are of NiceHash is, well one, you should have never left your coins on NiceHash to begin with, you, and, and, I'm, and that's not a dig at nice hash, you shouldn't leave your coins on any platforms, any exchanges, they should be in your own wallets that you control, especially since it's all Bitcoin related, that should be synced up right to your Trezor, and you should be, and, and back then I think it was an automatic weekly, pay, you could have had it set up as an automatic weekly payout, I mean that's nice hash automatically paid out to me um, in my wallets back then. So. Again, I'm not trying to be like, oh, like you shouldn't have done that because obviously nobody wants to lose money or whatever. But the the fact remains that you know this was obviously a mistake on NiceHash's part, but some negligence of the users as well. And I know some people don't want to hear that, but you know, at, at a minimum, you shouldn't have lost more than a week of mining earnings. Which I don't want anyone to lose their earnings. Okay, I get that, but you know, if you're losing three months of your mining earnings, it shouldn't have been on there. You know, someone's got to tell you. It shouldn't have been on there. And while you can put some blame on NiceHash, you need to take some ownership of that mistake yourself. Because we, you know, maybe lost like maybe 50 bucks back then. I can't even remember. But because we didn't keep a lot of coins on there. One thing we've been exploring recently, and we've talked about it a lot, is the Bitmain Antminer K5. It's the new CKB Nervos ASIC miner. We tried numerous times to get this connected properly to the nice hash mining pool. We have a thread where we talked about this on bosscointalk.com and basically what we tried and what went into this and how it didn't work. And uh, finally, after a little bit of back and forth with NiceHash and, and their internal testing, we were able to determine the Bitmain Antminer K5 does not support 
extra nonce subscription and basically what that means is that they are on because of that and this has to do with the bitmain firmware you know, the mining software in the device is that nice hash cannot successfully redirect your miner from order to order to order so basically you can get connected and you'll be stuck on one order and once that order completes or it gets changed or whatever now your miner is going to disconnect you're not going to be earning and it's going to be frustrating and you're going to think that like there's an issue with the server but basically nice hash is unable to redirect your miner and that's how their whole platform works they bounce your miner from order to order to order to order and without the ability to bounce your miner around the rig's just not going to work there which is unfortunate because this is a unique opportunity to mine ckb and be paid out in bitcoin which currently that uh, that coin is not on very many exchanges and especially exchanges that are accessible to us citizens time and time again we see nice hash at the top of mining profitability charts okay this so this is measuring the profitability of six nvidia 2070 graphics cards and if you've ever been on uh, what to mine or the other profit calculators you've seen nice hash in the top of the page all the time if it's not the top result it's normally right here on the first page and we've, we've got nice hash from two different mining algorithms right here on the first page and i'm not honestly exactly sure how they monitor this okay through their you know what to mine apis and uh nice hashes api and their platform but we have gotten higher and lower mining results. I mean, it really depends. There have been many times where it is more profitable to mine on NiceHash than say mine Ethereum directly because buyers are bidding for this hash rate. So they could be paying above the norm because they want some hash rate. And that actually leads us into another point that we need to talk about today is that the fact that NiceHash has been used to 51% attack uh, different cryptocurrency projects, okay? And a lot of people like to blame nice hash for this. I've been frustrated before and frustrated with nice hash. But at the end of the day, if you want a decentralized cryptocurrency ecosystem, you should be able to buy as much hash, you know, that you want, period. And you can't be crying for decentralization and then be crying for more centralization on whatever way it suits you that day. If these cryptocurrencies, for example, let's take Zcash, right? Zcash was never 51% attacked, but Zencash, which rebranded to Horizon, largely in part, I think, due to being 51% attacked, uh, you know, they were 51% attacked because they piggybacked on Zcash's success with their name, okay, with the ZK Snarks tech, and then also their mining algorithm, okay? So you use the same miners to mine Zcash that you did, uh, on Horizon Zen Cash, and what that means is that there's a massive, massive amount of hash rate on Zcash because it's a much bigger coin by market cap. It can support an infin infinitely more miners in comparison with a smaller market cap coin like uh, Zen Cash Horizon. Also, Bitcoin Gold was on this same mining algorithm as well. This was the most targetable mining algorithm anyway before i get super ranty if these projects would have just made their own unique mining algorithm then there wouldn't have been a bunch of excess hash rate available to attack them with okay but when you piggyback on someone else's success bad things can happen to you and everybody wants to blame the platform that made it potentially possible but I don't think that's necessarily fair. Do you want things to be decentralized or not? Again, this kind of comes back to what I talked about earlier. People not taking ownership, okay? They made a mistake. They didn't make a unique mining algorithm. They didn't build 51% protection into their blockchain through unique measures like integrating it into nodes or using, you know, there's a lot of different ways. I don't wanna, you know, I could go on and on. There's, there's new and more advanced methods to combat this. At the end of the day, while NiceHash was the vehicle used for this, they're more like the gun that murdered someone, okay? Someone pulled the trigger. Someone was killable, okay? And what this comes back to is that these projects failed their communities and they failed themselves, and NiceHash was just the gun, okay? Guns don't kill people, people do. Someone ordered that hash rate and did something bad with it on a project that was attackable and vulnerable. I'm not here to, I'm not gonna blame guns for murders, okay? People kill people, guns don't, they're just a tool. I think a lot of these things have been overdue to be said, uh, and 
you know, it's been a while since, say, a lot of these attacks have happened, except unless you're Bitcoin Gold, which was recently attacked yet again. Maybe get a new mining algorithm, guys. Maybe. Maybe it's an idea. And with that, that's going to be my platform review of uh, Nice Hash. I know this is probably a pretty unique uh, review style, but that's what happens when you're involved in mining and cryptocurrency long term and you don't just read off a script. You can talk from experience and you can give your two cents. And speaking of two cents, I want to hear what you guys have to say and think about Nice Hash in the video comments below. Do you like Nice Hash? Do you not? Why? I want to hear. Please hit the thumbs up whether you like the video or not. It really helps the channel move forward. Please subscribe if you have not already. We're chasing 100,000 subscribers and we'll see you on the next one.